But first, the CEO of the Business Council of Australia, Jennifer Westacott, is stepping down from her position after 12 years in that role. Her departure comes as no great surprise, but the question is, will the business community be sorry to see her go? Well, that's unlikely. Think back to last year when the Albanese government successfully introduced its controversial so-called Secure Jobs Better Pay Bill. As a financial review reported, Westacott said the fundamentally flawed workplace bill created a new unproven multi-employer bargaining model. This is a huge economic risk and there is no evidence multi-employer bargaining will lift wages, she said. She was right. But it was Westacott herself who had been the biggest cheerleader. Writing in the Sydney Morning Herald just a couple of months earlier, on the eve of the government's stage-managed Gab Fest, she wrote, It's frustrating that cynicism always seems to precede significant national gatherings, like the two-day Jobs and Skills Summit, which begins in Canberra on Thursday. The critics have been out in force, predictably and unimaginatively deriding it as a talk fest. And Westacott became besties with guess who? A couple of years ago, the two of you uh, came pretty close to agreement. You might maybe perhaps even had an agreement uh, on a way to improve enterprise bargaining, which has been gradually dying in Australia. Other business groups didn't like it and it hit a dead end. Um, Jennifer Westacott, to you first on this. Is this an idea that you're keen to revive or indeed build upon at the summit? Well, well, the first thing is, let me just say, that Sally and I are absolutely on a unity ticket that we want people to be paid more and we want that, those wage increases to, to be sustained. A unity ticket with Sally McManus of the ACTU? As Joe Aston wrote in the Financial Review, she used that line repeatedly. The McManus-Westacott camaraderie was painfully overplayed. Leading into the summit, feeding the hysteria of common ground and good intentions, when none existed. In service of Albanese, or at least her ongoing favour with him, Westacott even castigated those who questioned the government's motives. And Joe Aston concluded, the BCA's leaders provided the cover for Albanese to reverse 40 years of industrial relations gains. Welcome to being played off a break. Evidently, Westacott forgot that being a CEO of the Business Council of Australia is all about, well, improving business, not making it more difficult for them. So what is the BCA saying on net zero by 2050? We're saying we have to get there. We have to do the net zero by 2050. And should the government commit to that, legislate for that? Well, I think that would be a start, Hamish. And like many a CEO these days, she uses her profile for activism. A constitutionally enshrined voice to parliament will help ensure Indigenous Australians can enjoy the opportunity of full participation in the Australian economy and society as a whole, she declared in 2018. And why stop there? If there was one thing she loved as much as activism, it was making it all about herself. What was the tipping point for you in deciding that you would take a stand on this? Well, obviously, I'm in a same-sex relationship. I have been for, you know, over 30 years. I want to apologise to our trans and gender-diverse colleagues and friends. I want to apologise for the hurt you have endured, the cruelty you've been subjected to, and for the fundamental misinformation and unfairness that has shrouded this discussion over the last year, but particularly during this election. Alan Joyce and I, as co-patrons of Pride, want to apologise. Not because we said those things, not because we caused the hurt, but because somebody must. Where's the apology for taking your eye off the business ball, Jennifer Westacott? <laughs> 